Good morning. I uh, decided to go on a little bit early this morning so that because we had so many problems last week. So uh, I know that there are people still coming online. We're going to give them a chance to do that. So um, while I'm waiting, I'm going to see if I can manage this scrolling function. Um, and I'm not having much luck. Uh-oh. What did I do? Still there? I'm not going to fool with the scrolling function anymore. Um, but I decided to come on early to make sure everything was working okay. I can I, uh, um, for some reason, I can't see the chat box, and we're going to work on that. I keep saying that, I know, um, but I, I do have it on my phone, so hopefully I can see it there. So I see that uh, Debbie Sprouse and Deborah Wyman and Carolyn are on, and um, I know there are, there are some others, but I, I see your comments. So it, it's great to see you. It's great to be together again. Uh, for goodness sakes, it's a, it's a difficult time. I know it's hard for, for all of us. So, but we are hopeful one of these days. And when we do get back together, we are going to have a, a celebration to end all celebrations. But at least, and I'll say this again as more people come on, at least for now, um, we just don't feel like we can gather safely. Uh, uh, so we're doing the best we can. And I know that, that you are doing the best you can. And we're trying to be as creative as we could be. And uh, so I thank you. I thank you for taking the time to, to, to join together this morning on, on this 20th Sunday after Pentecost to, to give thanks for all that God's done for us, to, to pray for each other, to to actually be together. I, I know that you all probably can see the chat function. And uh, so I, I, you know, usually we uh, in, encourage people not to talk during church, but I'm encouraging you to talk during church and greet one another and check in with one another. And uh, this is a great time to do that. Uh, and, and until we can do it in person again and do that, that safely, we'll, we'll continue to gather here together on, on, on Facebook. So uh, it's, it's good to see everybody. We still have a couple of minutes, and I know that people are still coming on board. So like I said, I did go on early so that I could um, uh, make sure everything was working. Last week, we came over. I came over. I got everything all set up, and, and, and it, it said I didn't have the right password for the Internet. Well, it's been the same for ever since we got the internet. So I kept trying and eventually I got locked out of it only to find out that our internet wasn't working. So, but I ran over to the house and we got it done. So it seems to be back up and running today and we're, we're, we're glad for that. So, um, so it's good to see everybody. It's good to be, it, it's good to be together. Um, I would encourage you, even though I may not be able to see them, I know that you have things on your mind uh, and to uh, type prayer requests into uh, the chat box and, and I will try to go back and get those. So, um, uh, because I'm, I'm using my phone and, and I think I'll be able to see them on, on, on my phone. So. If you have prayer requests, and for goodness thing, we've all got people on our minds. So uh, I encourage you to type those in there and and, uh, and, and visit with one another now and, and during the service. So um, uh, got a little chilly last night, didn't it? I think our spring weather is gone. Summer weather is gone. I think fall is here to stay. 
um, I know that there are still some people signing on and um, I, I, I see that Karen's here and Sherry. And, um, I can't see everybody because I can't see you unless you actually leave a comment. Uh, for some reason, Bertha can see when you come on, but I can't. So maybe she just has better vision than I do. And that's quite possible, you know. So <laughs> Anyhow, it's good to be together, and uh, I'll just remind you that uh, there are a couple things going on. One is our diocese is uh, in the process of searching for a new bishop. Uh, I encourage you to keep the diocese in your prayers that uh, that search may be fruitful and we may find a, a leader to lead us into the future. Uh, just to give you an idea of how the timeline is going for that. Uh, it'll probably be about this time next year when we elect a new bishop. So uh, they are in the, the beginning stages of that search, but a lot of work is going on. I know a number of you uh, responded to the survey, and I thank you for that. And a number of you participated in the listening meetings, parish meetings, and I, I thank you for that. They are now calling over all that input and developing a profile and they will begin to solicit names in the next couple of months. And so hopefully about this time next year, we will be electing a new bishop. I say, hopefully, uh, we dearly love the bishop that we have, Bishop Klesmeyer, we will miss him, but uh, he gets to enjoy the fruits of retirement too, and he should get to enjoy that. Also remind you, we have a Bible study on Wednesday nights, that's on Zoom. It's Wednesday nights at six. It's really easy to use. And if you're the least bit uncomfortable Zoom, I encourage you to call the church office and, and Mary can help you get set up on that. So that's every Wednesday evening at six. So to repeat what I said earlier, uh, the vestries have decided that, you know, it's not, we don't want to threaten anybody's safety and anybody's health. So. It's very challenging at this time not to be able to gather together in person. Uh, for goodness sakes, I miss you and I know we all miss one another. There will be a time when this comes to an end and we are gonna have the celebration to end all celebrations. So I encourage you to continue to do what you're doing. Uh, and I thank you for being here this morning to join together on Facebook Live. So just before we begin, let's settle ourselves down remind ourselves of the presence of God that calls us all to be together and, and, and call upon God's presence to bless our worship this morning. And pray, blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the world, preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. This is a reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one, 
for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Well, whose head is this and whose title? They answered the emperor's. Then he said to them, Give, therefore, to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him, and they went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Almighty God, we have heard your word proclaimed here in our midst. May your word shape and form us into the people you have called us to become. Amen. I read a story this week on sermons.org about a, a young lady who was soaking up the, the sun's rays on a Florida beach when a little boy in his swimming trunks and carrying a towel came up to her and asked her, do you believe in God? And the woman was kind of taken aback, but she looked at the little boy. She said, well, yes, yes. In fact, I, I, I do believe in God. And, and then the little boy asked her, he said, um, what would you go to church? And she looked at him and says, well, yeah. As a matter of fact, I, I, I do go to church. And then he asked her, well, do you read the Bible and do you pray? And she says, well, yes, I do read the Bible and, and I do pray. But by now the woman was getting curious about why all these questions. And the little boy sighed with relief and looked at the woman and said, well, would you hold my quarter while I go swimming? That little boy was straightforward. That little boy was honest in his questions because he wanted to entrust to the woman something that was valuable to him. Now, the Pharisees that we just met in the reading from today's gospel are not being honest. They have no interest in entrusting Jesus with anything. They don't want Jesus to hold their quarter. They, instead, are looking for a way to get rid of this troubling Nazarene preacher named Jesus. And, and how do we know that? Well, the very first sentence from the very beginning of this morning's gospel reading says, they went and plotted to entrap him by what he said. And, of course, that's the real reason they ask their question. They're not interested in Jesus' answer. They were out to entrap him. And they thought that they had found the perfect trapping question. Think about this. Think about it. The Roman government. The Roman government had invaded uh, the, the land that was entrusted to our religious ancestors, the Jews. The Roman government had invaded Israel and stolen away their land and, and taken away the promised land that, had, that they believed had been given to them by God. And, and, and they, Romans occupied that land. They sent in armies. They sent in military. They erected pagan statues in, in the temple. And to finance this occupation, to pay for keeping this land that the Romans had stolen from our religious ancestors, they collected taxes. So if Jesus says, well, sure, it's okay to pay the tax, 
He, in effect, is saying it's okay to side with those invading, stealing, corrupting heathens who had subverted God's will. And then the religious leaders, the Pharisees, could, could charge Jesus with subverting all that was holy. But on the other hand, if he said, no, it's not okay to pay the tax, the Herodians can say he is subverting the rule of law. He should be arrested. He should be charged with treason because he is against the Roman government. But of course, Jesus doesn't answer their question head on, does he? He says, show me the coin. Let me see the coin. Whose face is on it? Well, if it belongs to Caesar, why not give it back to Caesar? It's Caesar's. But then Jesus says, but, and this is really critical, but give to God what is God's. If the coin belongs to Caesar, give it to Caesar. The most important thing is you give to God. What is God? So the text this morning is a lot more than about paying taxes. In fact, the text this morning is a, about a lot more than the separation between church and state. But the text this morning reminds us that it's God who has ultimate importance in our lives. And, and this text this morning invites us to ask the question, what is it, what is it that we are devoted to? What is it that we are so devoted to that we hope to attain salvation from it? And if the answer to that second question is anything other than God Almighty, then our priorities are way out of whack. Now, the truth be told, there are probably a number of things that we are devoted to. We're probably devoted to the community where we live. And I, and I got to tell you, Bertha and I have lived here in central West Virginia for, for 12 and a half years in Lewis and Upshur counties. And, and we have come to cherish this community. We have come to cherish out it, this, these communities people really come together, that people really come together and support one another, that people really care and love one another. And we enjoy the benefits of living here. And, and the local government does things for us, like provide fire departments and police departments and water departments and hospitals and schools and libraries and, and parks. And we have come to understand that we owe something to keep this local community functioning and keep this local community on the right road of being what it is. We also take pride, great pride, in being West Virginians. We enjoy the culture of West Virginia, the roads of West Virginia. Again, the hospitals, the provision for law and order, and all that is done to take care of this great state of West Virginia. And again, we've come to understand that we owe something to keep West Virginia being the great state that it is. And of course, certainly, we are proud citizens of the United States of America, this great country where we enjoy so many blessings, so many freedoms, and so many liberties. And we understand that those freedoms, those blessings, those, those liberties just don't fall out of the sky and happen. But there are all kinds of people who sacrifice and work really hard to provide us with the opportunity to, to live in this great country. And again, we agree that we owe a part of what we have so that this blessing, blessed nation can continue. And I guess likewise, we're devoted to a lot of other things too. A lot of us are devoted to our jobs. 
And if we're devoted to our job, we owe our place of employment something. A lot of us are devoted to our families. And we know that by being devoted to our families, we owe our families something. A lot of us are devoted to civic organizations. And this devotion is good. And it's holy. And it's worthwhile. Because our community, our state, our country, our job, our family, our civic ties give us something. But, this is important, but God gives us everything. God gave us creation. God gives us the gift of this day. God gives us the gift of life. God gives us every breath that we breathe, every job, every talent, every ability that we enjoy. It is God who has given that to us. God gives us salvation. And the problem with the Herodians and the Pharisees in Matthew's gospel was they had replaced allegiance to God with allegiance to a government. They had replaced allegiance to God with allegiance to their appointed church office or function. They had replaced their God-given opportunity to listen to Jesus, to the Son of God. They had replaced that opportunity with jealousy and suspicion and envy. And they plotted to destroy him. And eventually, they would. But of course, we know that God would have the last word. So let me end by asking you what the little boy asked the woman on the beach. Do you believe in God? I know you do because you're here today. Do you go to church? I know you do because you're here today. Do you read the Bible and do you pray? I know you do because you're here today. So will you hold my quarter? Will you hold on to, I think, the most valuable thing that I know of? And that's this. God loves each of us with a passion. God has given us everything that we have. And because God loves us with a passion. God invites us to share in God's mission and share what we have been given and share it freely for the good of God's kingdom. And let's pray. Good and gracious God, we gather as your people this morning, people who know you, people who love you, a people who try the best we can to do the best we can, a people who are reminded that all that we are comes from you. So bless us with an awareness of, of your presence in every moment of our lives. Bless us with a willingness to share what has been given to us with others. Not for necessarily our own good, but for the good of your kingdom. Amen. Um, again, I, I, I thank you for being here this morning. I, um, uh, I know that there are A number of prayers. We have a family who, whose uh, friends' parents are both in, in ICU this morning. Uh, we pray for Laura. We pray for David. Uh, we pray for Karen and Mentor and Tom uh, and Libby and Patsy. Um, 
and I know that there are a number of things that you have uh, on your mind that, that you would like to pray for. And um, so of all those prayers mentioned and all those prayers that we hold within our hearts, we pray, Almighty God, that only you know what we truly need and you know how much we deeply desire for those we love. And we ask you to watch over them, bless them, heal them, and, and restore them to the strength of, of your presence. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have drawn us together this morning on Facebook Live to share that presence with one another and with you. Now send us into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, I can't thank you enough for being here, this, for your being here this morning. Uh, your presence really makes a difference. Uh, know that we're praying for you. You keep praying for us and, 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 and God love you and God bless you and, and God keep you safe today, this week. And, and we're going to be back together one of these days. And when we do it, we're going to lift the roof off this church and have a celebration like none we ever imagined possible. Amen. Look forward to seeing you. I'll be here again next week. Thank you and God bless.